right off the bat. Oh my goodness. No, 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 no. Mm. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. I am super excited for this month's Boost My Build. This is a series where you submit your PC part picker list, we tear them apart, and we put them together to boost up your performance. If you get value of the video, give it a like. It really makes a difference, especially to this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by Micro Center, my favorite tech place on earth. If you've never been to a Micro Center, you are missing out on the coolest place for PC builders to get the best deals on the latest tech. Our video editing PC died recently, so I ran over to my local Micro Center where the friendly staff helped me find everything I needed. A top of the line X570 motherboard, Ryzen 5950X, awesome Lee and Lee case, and more for a great price. Whether you're building a new PC, buying a pre-built laptop or TV, or just want to hang out in the coolest tech place on earth, check out your local Micro Center and new customers use the code in the video description to get a free 240 gigabyte SATA SSD. Okay, we've got 24XYZ writes in, hey Jason, it's my first time building a PC. Great, congrats. They want to do this for gaming. They want to go older like they understand DDR4 is better than DDR5 because DDR5 is too expensive. They want to upgrade the GPU and CPU to an all-in-one cooler when they have the money. Uh, we'll see what that means. And then they're asking if some of the early adopter issues like XMP and drive detection with Z690 have been fixed and their budget's around $1,300. I don't know why we're talking about Z690 for $1,300. Let's see what we've got. Okay, here we are. I right off the bat. Oh my goodness. No, 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 no. Mm. We've got a totally upside down build. If you can tell me what's wrong, put push pause. Tell me down right now in the comments what's wrong with this build. You, it's pretty easy to spot. That's right. We have got a completely undersized GPU for our CPU. So we have an EVGA. Who cares about the? We have a GTX 1650 4 gigabyte, not even a super. I could at least get by with a super here and we're spending $354 on it or somewhere in that ridiculous neighborhood. That's just the market right now. And we're gonna pair that with an i5 12600K. That's insane. This is a top flight processor right now. I wouldn't, I honestly wouldn't touch something like this with a budget build unless I've got like a, you know, RTX 3070 or something like that. Let's go over the rest of the build really quickly. We've got a Pure Rock 2 cooler. I think it's a little undersized for a 12600K, but just make sure you get the right mounting bracket for it if you do get one of those. We got the Gigabyte Z690 Gaming X. This is a motherboard that I do recommend for the i5 12600K. Now, Gigabyte has had more issues than other vendors with some of the Z690 stuff, but that's mostly been solved at this point. So thankfully, just make sure to update the BIOS if you're using this board to the most current one using the BIOS flashback before you do anything in the settings, especially try and activate XMP because those boards are just not doing well with XMP on the original shipped BIOS. So update that BIOS. The memory's fine. It's, you know, DDR4 3600CL18. We got 16 gigs. That's all we really need. The drive's fine. This is one of the budget drives I recommend, the SN550 one terabyte. Right now, it's for some reason, it's it's more expensive than it normally is. Uh, we could find a drive for about $20 cheaper that with the same performance. We got the, the poor little 1650 for $354. Then we're spending a lot of money on a really nice case but again this these are not cases that are in your budget level this is a Corsair IQ 4000 RGB it's phenomenal but why are we spending $130 that's 10% of our budget on this case and then you the power supplies it's fine EVGA BQ uh, this is a C tier rated unit I might think about getting something a little nicer than this but overall the the wattage certainly works probably a little bit more than we need but let's just, let's take a step back. How do we build a gaming PC, boys and girls? That's right. The number one thing we do is we build the PC around our graphics card. Then we focus on getting a CPU that's just not gonna bottleneck that GPU. That's the key lesson to take away from this build. And it looks like we did the opposite. We went for the CPU that just seemed super shiny out there. And then we tried to pair it with whatever fit into our budget at the end. And then we said, oh, okay, well, maybe six months or a year from now, I'll get a better graphics card. Seems like a, a waste of a lot of money uh, to take that approach. So let's see what we can do. All right, I think you're gonna love that you brought your build to us to tear apart because we're putting it back together in an amazing way and it's gonna significantly boost up your gaming performance. So much so that I call this the right side up actually gaming build. 
Let's take a look and let's start with that graphics card, which was our biggest problem. We went with the RX 6600 XT. Now in this market right now, the best value graphics cards are either the 6600 or the 6600 XT. The Nvidia graphics card, absolutely nowhere in the value equation right now because everybody wants to get them and they're paying stupidly high prices, primarily for mining. 6600, it doesn't really matter which card you get in terms of the manufacturer. They're all kind of the same. The only one I would avoid is the Biostar one that tends to overheat, but that's not available in the US market anyway. But MSI Gigabyte doesn't matter. Just get the lowest priced one and you're gonna be very, very happy. To that, we've paired a i5-12400 Alder Lake CPU that I think you're going to get a lot of value out of. Now, listen, yes, you could try for the 12600K build, but again, we're going to be graphics card limited with your budget. So pairing it with a locked part like the 12400 makes a lot of sense. Should MSRP for around $175 Let's see what kind of stock and volume that Intel is able to provide. But this is a fine, we're paying a little bit of a price premium to be early adopters of it, but that's fine. The motherboard. What do I love about this Asus Prime B660M motherboard? I love that it's in stock because so few of the B660 motherboards have actually made it to shelves at Newegg, at Amazon, at anywhere right now. We're just waiting for them to come in. This one's in stock, it's relatively affordable. We'll have to see some of the other behaviors, but for a locked six core part, I'm not worried about the VRMs on this. For our budget, I think it's gonna be just fine. We stuck it out with your Corsair Vengeance RGB memory, uh, DDR4 3600CL18. I don't have any data, nobody has any memory scaling data on Alder Lake right now to tell you what the best memory for Alder Lake is. I think this is a good guess though, 3600CL18. You like this kit, it's RGB, so we stuck with it. I just went ahead and swapped in a different uh, N.2 NVMe one terabyte drive just because this one's on sale right now. Again, this is as, just as good as the drive you had. It's just that at the time I'm doing this, the Western Digital Drive is more expensive for some silly reason. Then on the case, I get that you want that black kind of RGB cool aesthetic. So I went with the Fantex Eclipse P368, $80. He's got two included ARGB fans. You still will need one for the rear, but you needed one for the case you had anyway. And for that, we've gotten the Fantex just gen generic ARGB fan. Just go ahead and daisy chain all the ARGB together before you plug it into the header. I'm pretty sure that motherboard probably only has one ARGB header. For the cooler on this thing, we went with the Arctic Freezer 34 Esports Duo, a, a all black one. Now, why do we go with this cooler? Because the LGA 1700 mounting bracket comes with it. That's a huge advantage and it comes for the same price as it normally comes for the cooler itself for only $45. So you're getting the bracket for free, which you should get the bracket for free, but that's not the way it's been going. A lot of times you're having to buy, spend another 10 bucks on the, on the bracket for different cooler vendors. So this one comes all together. This is a phenomenal cooler. You could go with the included box cooler to save a little bit of money if you just can't squeeze out the extra 12 bucks or something like that. Just a little noisy at kind of max usage, but overall will perform fine. We did swap out the power supply for something that's 10 bucks cheaper and just a similar unit uh, that I like just a little bit better, but your unit was fine if you wanna go ahead and stick with that. All told $1,312 max FPS on this thing well, well, well over that poor little 1650. And I think you're gonna agree that this build is boosted. Crack says, hi, intended use is mostly esports gaming. Okay, they're gonna go with an APU because of GPU prices, certainly understandable, but they don't know if they should go with a what? An NZXT M22 water cooler? The answer to that is gonna be no. Their budget's $1,100 for the whole build. No problem, we should be able to get an APU build for that, but let's see what we got. I'm a little scared here. Okay, let's see your overall build. It's $1,139. I ended up fixing this $200 monitor. Uh, you had a, a kind of a crazy price in there, and I see see what the problem here is. Look, this is a very, very expensive APU build, and it's because you have been infected by the NZXT virus. And the NZXT virus is a terrible virus, very contagious among PC builders that gets you to ship all of your monies to NZXT. Now it's okay if you wanna pay for aesthetics, a joking aside, they make good stuff, as long as you don't sacrifice performance. But I can see right away that we're sacrificing performance because we're spending too much on stuff that has NZXT coolness to it. Again, their stuff's cool, but let's get performance out of the way first. Uh, for instance, we've got a Ryzen 5600G, that's fine for an APU. Well, you could use the included Ray Stealth cooler instead we're spending $80 on all-in-one liquid cooler, 120 millimeter one. 120 millimeter all-in-one liquid coolers are only actually slightly less effective typically than budget 
tower coolers like Cooler Master Hyper 212 and an id cooling SE 224, those kind of budget coolers. So I do not recommend them for anything other than a small form factor build where you just literally can't fit anything else. Similarly, we got the Gigabyte B550 uh, MDS3H. Now this is fine. You're paying like 96 bucks for it. So I'm not going to beat you up that much, but there are other cheaper B450 motherboards that we could be using with a 5600G build because 5600G doesn't have PCIe Gen 4. So we could actually be getting a better over overall motherboard for it because we don't need Gen 4 support with a B450, especially some of the ones that have have BIOS flashback, which you're going to need in order to use with this processor. Memory is fine. It's 3200 CL16, just an expensive kit. We could probably find a kit about $25 cheaper. Drive's fine. It's a budget drive. Currently, this one's a little bit more expensive. They kind of go in a cycle. This one's obviously on the more expensive side right now. I'm sure tomorrow will be one of the cheaper ones, but we got to get rid of this NZXT H510 case. Uh, $100 on uh, for the for this case just doesn't make any sense for us whatsoever. Power supply is fine. 650 watts, kind of overkill, but you're also planning for the future upgradability to a graphics card, so I don't mind that at all. Windows 10 license, $110. This is a killer. You know, you can use Windows 10 for free forever. I have a couple PCs that have forever free versions of Windows 10. Now, it's a little annoying you. You lose some of the functionality that personalization, you can't like, for instance, display your temps in the system bar. A lot of people go ahead and upgrade using a, a, a re key reseller. We're not going to get into that here. If you want to spend $109 to feel more comfortable with that, I'll, we'll let that one go. The monitor, it's a fine monitor. I would also recommend taking a look at like the Pixio PX248, $189. It's one of the monitors I recommended in my best gaming monitor 2022 video that came out recently. I'll leave a link to it up there in the card. Check that out if you're looking for gaming monitors. But getting these really expensive peripherals. Like if you, this is the investment you want to make, fine, but I wouldn't go this route. Uh, I would buy this stuff later. I would get the performance out of your PC first and then worry about as time goes on, you can, adding a gaming mouse is easy. Upgrading your motherboard to a slightly better motherboard later is hard. Upgrading your cooler to a slightly better cooler is hard. Changing out the CPU or the, that's all hard stuff. Plugging a mouse in is easy. So I would do the hard stuff up front and work out the easy stuff on down the line. All right, buckle your seatbelt because I'm making a big left turn off of your Ryzen APU build. If you want to finish that build, check out my best Ryzen 5600G build. I'll put a link to it up there in the card, but I want to get you a gaming PC with an actual GPU you can use for great 1080p levels of gaming for the same price. This build I'm about to show you is $1,100 the same price as your build. And yes, it still includes a monitor, it still includes a mouse and a keyboard. So how did I do this? Well, we're taking advantage of a crash in Ethereum. Miners right now, smart miners, with the merge coming for Ethereum, they are beginning to sell off low profitability cards. And the four gigabyte cards are very low profitability because they can't mine Ethereum. And the profitability of those lesser coins has come down as the profitability of Ethereum has as well. They're all kind of linked. The benefit for you and me is that these four gigabyte cards are coming down in price. Right now at eBay, you can get a GTX 1650 Super four gigabyte card for anywhere from $290 up to $350. Yes, I know it's double the MSRP, but we live in 2022, early 2022. And in early 2022, that's an actually good deal for this card because you were gonna build an APU build for $1,100. I'm gonna give you one that has actual performance. If you get it off eBay, you do have buyer protection. If you plug it in, the card doesn't work. So I would recommend taking a look at that. And I re recommend that to all budget builders out there. Their RX 6500 XT looks like it's a total dud. In fact, I'm filming this on the launch day. Was very disappointed in what AMD did with that card. So used GPUs are on the menu again. But we're also going to take down the cost of the rest of the build. We're going to go with the i5 10400F. Why the i5 10th gen Intel? Why not 11th or 12th? Because the 10th gen is massively being discounted right now because 11th gen is out, 12th gen is out. Yes, 10th gen does not have PCIe Gen 4, but your Ryzen 5600G doesn't have PCIe Gen 4 either. So this is absolutely fine. It's gonna give you a very strong gaming processor. And with that, we're gonna pair it with a B560 motherboard. Why B560? Well, because you can overclock memory on B560. You cannot do that with uh, B460. So don't get B460 boards, those are trash. 
You want a B560 board and don't get an H510 either. You just want to get a B560. I'm going to go with the Gigabyte board here, the DS3H. Not a bad motherboard. It's uh, $108. Just know that with 10 Gen parts, because these are PCIe Gen 4 motherboards, the top slot is PCIe Gen 4, the top M.2 slot. So it's disabled if you're going to use a 10th Gen Intel part. Just use the secondary M.2 slot. That'll run at regular PCIe Gen 3 speeds. So you'll have one less spot, but you're gonna have a gaming PC capable of playing games. We went with a cheap 16 gigabyte DDR4 3200CL16 kit. This is kind of an ugly kit, but you can get for about $60. You can get a nicer looking kit, or maybe you just don't care and you wanna save a couple bucks. We stayed with your drive, the 500 gigabyte. I went with the Thermaltake Versa H18. This is a micro ATX uh, case, it comes with one fan, it's got decent airflow to it, a couple of nice USB ports in the front, all told, you know, for 50 something dollars, $55 out the door, that's a pretty good price. I did add one more fan because we want to make sure we have at least one intake fan. These are not high heat parts, by the way, so you're not going to need to worry a lot about airflow, but you do need to have some airflow. Speaking of airflow, you could use the Intel included box cooler. I opted to get 100% of the performance by investing $26 in the SE224 Basic. Now listen, there is an argument to be made that if you have to invest in this cooler, maybe you look at getting 12th gen when the 12400F comes back in stock. Right now it's not in stock. The 12th gen is just out of stock most everywhere. Otherwise I would have considered that for this build. Maybe in a future boost my build will do that. But right now 10th gen Intel is a really good deal to look at. Power supply essentially the same. I did come down on your Windows license. It is a brutal burden on budget gaming builders to buy a $109 Windows license. That's almost 10%, actually it's exactly 10% of the overall price. And that is absolutely ridiculous. Overall though, for $1,120, I'm gonna get you a gaming PC that actually plays games at high frame rates at 1080p. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. All right, we've got Angel. now. Angels recently started watching this series. Hey, thanks for watching. And they want to build a gaming PC, but they don't know where to start. They want to play VR games. They want to play games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Valorant. They're not sure what ports they need and they're not sure what graphics card, but their friend told them all you need is a GTX 1050. Ugh, I don't know about that. Their budget is between $1,500 and $1,200 USD. Let's take a look. Okay, wow, I feel like we're back in 2020, maybe 2019, before Ryzen 5000 launched because we've got a Ryzen 7 3700X with a crazy GTX 1050 Ti for $327. Oh my gosh, the humanity here. If you told me a couple years ago that in 2022, a card like this would be going for $327, I would have told you you're off your rockers, get off the drugs, but here we are. However, we can do better. I know we can do better than this. Your build's about $1,300. You've got uh, a Ryzen 3700X, that's fine-ish. There's nothing wrong with what you've done here. It all works together. All the parts would function, but from a price to performance standpoint, we are much further off the mark than we want, and we can do a lot better. I did go ahead and look up the Oculus Rift page here in terms of what the recommendations are, and yes, your friend was right. They say an NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti is the minimum specs, but they recommend at least a GTX 1060 or RX 480. We can do way better than that, so what I'm primarily worried about then is Valorant and Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Now, Valorant will run on a toaster, but Call of Duty Modern Warfare needs a little bit more mm, a little bit of harder to run game. Not terribly hard, especially if you turn down the settings to more competitive levels. But if you want to play at high quality, yes, we need a much better graphics card. And look at this. We're committing the traditional sin of going aesthetics over performance. We've got a very expensive Corsair IQ 4000 case. Beautiful case, by the way. But crazy to think that we're going to pair that with a GTX 1050 Ti build when we're leaving performance on the table. Then we've got a crazy powerful 750 watt. This is a great power supply, don't get me wrong, but total overkill for what we're doing and $120, that's a huge percentage of our build. I like your SSD choice. It just happens that right now the SN550 is a little more expensive, just kind of goes in cycles. So you just check the budget drives and I just typically buy the cheapest one because the performance is about the same. I like your memory. It's DDR4 3200CL16. I think we can probably get you a cheaper kit and shave off some money to get a graphics card. So let's take a look at what we can do. Okay, here are the changes I've made. Now I've updated you to a Ryzen 5 5600X PC build. We could have easily gone Intel 10th, 11th gen, 
or even Intel 12th gen right now. But I decided to keep it in the Ryzen family. You seem like you wanted Ryzen. And right now, in terms of the motherboards, especially since 12th generation, motherboards aren't really a thing yet. The B660s haven't really hit the stores and they haven't been tested in a way that I feel as comfortable recommending. If you want Ryzen, we're gonna stick with Ryzen. I won't make you go older like, although that is increasingly becoming my recommendation for budget gaming PCs. We went off the stock cooler. We went with an id cooling SE224, same performance as the Cooler Master Hyper 212, but about half the price. For the motherboard, we went with the ASUS Tough Gaming B550 Plus. This is an absolutely great motherboard. It's better than the motherboard you were looking at. It's got a better audio codec. It's got more rear USB connectivity. Overall, just a, a better package of motherboard, and it's 20 bucks cheaper than the one you were looking at. For the memory, I went ahead and just swapped out your kit. Nothing wrong with your kit. I just wanted to shave some more money off here, and we got you an equally performant T-Force Delta RGB kit. This is a really nice kit. I have uh, one of these in white in the PC next to me. They look phenomenal. The RGB on them is really, really attractive. So I feel great about swapping those out. I also did swap out your SSD to one of the other budget drives that's just on sale right now. Again, before you buy your SSD, just make sure it's on sale. And if it's not, check one of the other budget drives. You can usually save about 10, 15 bucks that way. But here is the piece de resistance, okay? We went with the MSI Radeon RX 6600 XT. Doesn't matter which, if you MSI, Gigabyte, who cares? It mostly just matters that you're getting an RX 6600 XT. This card is going to smoke, smoke the GTX 1050, and it's going to play all of your VR games. It's going to do really well. It's going to do a really good job at 1080p and at reduced settings uh, and 1440p on the hardest to run AAA titles, or it will actually do pretty well at 1440p on most other kind of uh, non AAA games. So great card for the case. I know you like the all black aesthetic. You like the RGB. I really think the Fantex Eclipse P360 is a great buy. It's $80. It's about 50 bucks less than the case you wanted. Comes with two ARGB fans. These are cases are quite nice to build in. They look phenomenal. Of course, it does need an extra fan, so I picked up one for you. I just got the same Fantex fan. You can get whatever you want, a Corsair, doesn't matter, just kind of a random RGB fan. And then we went with a slightly cheaper, well, actually massively cheaper power supply, which is the Corsair CXM650. This is an 80 plus bronze certified. It's C tier on the Linus Tech Tips. Excuse me, this is the PSU Cultist list. Now they're off the Linus Tech Tips forums. Overall, though, for $1,356, that's right, just about $60 more than your build. I got you a PC well below your budget that will run all of those games that you're looking for at much higher settings to absolutely destroy that 1050 Ti and give you a phenomenal gaming experience. So your build is boosted. All right, Xenia. Xenus is a friend of the channel. First build for this setup, they wanna do a 1440p, 144 hertz, ray tracing and triple A titles. Okay, this is a pretty demanding gaming PC. They wanna do a 12400F, but they're in France. In PC Part Picker, it wasn't in there, so they went ahead and put in 11400F instead. Let's check that out. Budget is 1600, but their overall setup, which has to be included, is 2000. Let's take a look at what they've got. Now you had prices in here, and it seems like you were expecting 12th gen Intel to be a lot cheaper. You uh, had a lot less for the CPU in there. You had a lot less in there for B660. But when I actually put in 12th gen parts, and these are relatively cheap ones, you can see the build actually came out to over 2,000 euros. It's 2,061 euros right now, which is over your limit. Now you got a 1440p gaming monitor, a pretty nice one in here. You got a very expensive uh, RGB wired gaming keyboard. Do you really need that? These are the things I would think about. But let's take a look at the build because I see some mis some challenges right off the bat. The first one that I'm gonna just kind of question is the SATA SSD. Look, nothing technically wrong with it. It's a one terabyte SATA SSD, but why are we getting a SATA SSD in 2022? You can find much faster NVMe drives um, and they're cheaper right now. So that's one of the things I would definitely take a look at. Great, you were able to get an RTX 3070 for 700 euros, fantastic. You wanna go with the Lee and Lee Land Cool 215. This is a great case. I just did a build in this case, by the way. Looks phenomenal. But the 12400, you're gonna cool it with the Gamex GT ARGB cooler. You need to get the right LGA 1700 cooling bracket for this. I don't know if you've got that already or if you know how to get that. And then you've got some, you know, pretty expensive Crucial Ballistics memory in here. I first have to kind of just dig through and just see what the heck does everything cost in this region. And I will tell you this memory is a little bit on the expensive side, not terribly, but the other thing that sticks out to me here is the power supply. 115 euros for a great unit, by the way. Seasonic Focus GX is a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal unit. I believe it's A tier. 
but I'm just questioning the 115 euros on a build where we're already over budget. But I've also got some ideas. Let's take a look. I called this one Air France under budget. Let's take a quick look. I decided to stick with 12400. I considered dropping it down to 11th gen Intel. It seems like you really want 12th gen Alder Lake. So let's go ahead and make that work. I'm going to assume you can make this cooler work. If you cannot, just make sure it gets the LGA 1700 bracket. That's the key thing here. Uh, we went with the ASRock B660M Pro. There's no picture of it. So let's just, this is a micro ATX motherboard. Unfortunately, the B660 motherboards in France are very, very, very expensive. So much so that I considered switching you even to Ryzen or switching over to 11th gen, but I decided to go with this. This motherboard seems like it has a decent-ish feature set. I wish that, you know, it had a, a better audio codec on it, but it looks like a pretty good motherboard, 474 euros. I did go ahead and switch out your memory kit. I found one for 15 euros cheaper. Now 15 euros, remember that's a lot more in USD. So I went with a, uh, the T-Force Delta. This is a great RGB kit. I think I've used this in a couple of uh, Boost My Builds recently. This is the all black one. I use this in my 5600X gaming build. I was able to get you the Western Digital Blue SN 550. Instead of that SATA SSD, we went ahead and got a one terabyte M.2 drive. There you go. And it's six euros cheaper than what you were looking at. So there you go. It's cheaper now. Just cement this in your head. It's cheaper now most of the time to get an NVMe drive than it is a SATA drive. And the performance is going to be significantly better on the NVMe drive. For the card, obviously, we're not going anywhere. You've got the RTX 3070. That's great. I kept the Lian Li Lan Cool. I almost swapped out this case, but we are now under your uh, $2,000 budget. However, I did go with a a, a good power supply. We want drop down to the B tier. Still very, very good. You, a C tier would be fine for this build. But the Asus Tough Gaming 650 watt 80 plus bronze unit is a very, very good one. So overall, we were able to drop your build down to 1986, get you the 12th gen performance that you were looking for. And we were able just to drill down on a couple of components. So no major changes here, but we definitely made some tweaks to get you under budget and get you the performance you're looking for. What did you think of the builds? Are there things that you would do differently? Let me know down in in the comments. And of course, if you got value of the video, give it a like. It makes a big difference to the channel. This guy right here really does appreciate it. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. If you want even more Boost My Build, I'm going to leave the whole playlist for Boost My Build in 2021 right here. Check it out. Get some popcorn. Boost My Build all night long. And with that, we'll catch you on the next one.